now that we've talked about sets, we're going to start talking about logic, uh, which is going to give us a framework with which to talk about sets and numbers and all sorts of other mathematical objects. A statement is a sentence that is always true or false. Uh, examples for statements include things like 2 plus 2 is 4, uh, it is raining. Um, Counterexamples include things like opinions and questions. Statements are typically denoted with lowercase letters such as P, Q, R, S, etc. Statements may be combined using connectives to make more interesting compound statements. We typically use the lowercase letters to refer to single atomic statements. Then once we've made them compound, we use Greek letters such as phi, psi, and gamma. And so that one's phi, that one's psi, that one's gamma. A truth table is a device that allows us to tell when a compound statement is true or false given the values of its component statements. What's going to happen now is we're going to kind of go through the list of connectives and see the truth table for each one of them, and after that we'll learn how to use truth tables on more complicated statements. Our first connective is the negation. It's symbolized with this little hook. The negation, not P, that's how you pronounce the statement, is not P, or it is not the case that P is true. The negation not P is true when P is false, and vice versa. A truth table will have our component statements, such as P, on the left side, and on the right side it's going to have our compound statement, such as not P. I'm going to carefully enumerate the values of P, which is easy here because it's just true and false. And then for not P, I'm going to see what happens when P is true. So when P is true, not P should be false, and when P is false, not P should be true. It's a little more interesting when we have more than one letter involved, but this is the truth table for the negation. So to give you an example, uh, for most of this video, let's have the statement P be 2 plus 2 equals 4. The statement is of course true, and therefore the statement not P is the statement 2 plus 2 is not 4, which is false. Negation is called a unary connective because it only includes one statement. Things get a little more interesting once we allow for two or more statements. So next we're going to have the conjunction P and Q, which is true only when P and Q are both true. If you think about it in English, if you say a statement with an and in it, both parts of your statement had better be true. The systematic way to do a truth table is to start with the leftmost column and have half of your rows be true and half of your rows be false. By the way, a truth table with n letters has two to the n rows. If you think about that in the case of two letters, I've got two ways that P can go, I've got two ways that Q can go, two times two is four, so that's gonna give me four total rows. So I have my leftmost column be half true and half false, and then I look at the places where P is true and I divide those into half. So half of my true P's are gonna have a true Q, and the other half are gonna have a false Q. And then half of my false P's are gonna have a true Q, and then the other half are gonna have a false Q. And by doing the truth table like that, we can systematically get every combination of true and false without worrying that we missed something. Your leftmost column should always be half and half. Your rightmost statement letter column should always be alternating. Okay, so P and Q is true when both P and Q are true, and false otherwise. We had earlier that P was 2 plus 2 is 4. Let's have Q be a different kind of statement. Q is going to be the statement, uh, the earth is flat, which is a statement that we all know is false. So therefore, the statement P and Q is going to be the statement 2 plus 2 equals 4, and the earth is flat. Even though one of the conjuncts in that statement is true, the other is not, so therefore P and Q is a false statement. The disjunction, P or Q, is true when at least one of P or Q is. So we just need one of P or Q this time. 
Again, I will do the truth table the same way I did before, half true, half false, a quarter true, a quarter false, a quarter true, a quarter false. This time, just one of P or Q has to be true, so the statement P or Q is going to be true in the first, second, and third rows, and false in the fourth row only. This time, our example is the statement P or Q, which is that 2 plus 2 equals 4, or the Earth is flat. This statement is true because it's good enough just for the 2 plus 2 equals 4 part. Finally, the exclusive disjunction, which we're not going to use a lot in our videos, but is important in computer science, electrical engineering, and stuff like that, is the statement P, X, or Q, which is the statement that is true when exactly one of the disjuncts P or Q is. True, true, false, false. True, false, true, false. This time, the row where P and Q are both true is going to give us a false statement because it's only the statement is only true when exactly one of its disjuncts is. It's going to be true in the second and third rows and false in the fourth row. A good example for this connective is the statement, you may have the soup or the salad. It is unlikely that any of us hearing that statement would think we were going to get both the soup and the salad. So that's a pretty good example of the exclusive or. I just want to make the comment here that in mathematics, typically a disjunction is inclusive. In other words, the other kind that we've studied unless explicitly stated otherwise.